Doug Jones has just set a new major league record. He has saved his 14th consecutive game. From the Cleveland Indians, number 11, Doug Jones. Doug Jones, a new pitcher now. Down for the 60th time, and you very rarely see your stopper come into a game where you're behind. Leonard Howe wants to win this one, and that's why he's using Jones here in this non-save situation. Tied at seven. Struck him out. Good fastball from Jones. He got Ripken looking for the off speed stuff and threw a fastball right by him. I came to Lebanon High School my sophomore year, and uh, Keith Campbell was my cousin. I guess he's still my cousin. I guess I guess I got to put that in there, that caveat. And uh, he was the baseball coach, was the JV football coach, and had me running around doing all that stuff. And it was a blast. I had fun, made new friends, and. Uh, I've had a good time doing that, but uh, that that kind of picked the baseball back up for me. Kick one of the pitches that Jones throws. Uh, he's got an assortment of junk, doesn't he? He's got three different change-ups. Slow, slower, and stop. <laughs> stop, huh? He's got one that takes a lunch break on the way to the plate. <laughs> They're supposed to look like a fastball when you throw it, and then all of a sudden, that's not the fastball. And they swing and miss because they swung too early. Well, if you can do the same thing with the same pitch, you throw fastball hard. For me, that was 89, maybe. And then I'd throw one intentionally, try to throw it 84 or 5, just take something off. And then occasionally throw one in there like I'm throwing batting practice at about 79. And then throw a changeup at 75, and then one at 70, and then one at 65. There's six pitches. And then to be able to put them in pretty precise areas, you know, this big, uh, with consistency, you know, made you a pretty hot commodity with most, most just, teams. Like he's almost passive on the mound. I mean, they step out, he just stands there, just to, doesn't look like he even knows there's a hitter in the box. I tried to remind them that all I was trying to do was to not see, not let them see my knees shaking. A lot, a lot of times I was more nervous than most people because of what I was doing. I mean, there's, you know, there's Tony Gwynn. How many, what am I going to do? I mean, you can't get him out. So, and it was, it was, you know, it's, there's a lot of nerves going on out there, but I tried not to look at the guys. I would look down at the ground and I could see his feet. And when he walked into the box, I would look up at the sign and then I'd start my delivery because I didn't want to make eye contact with him. I didn't want, I didn't even know who was on deck most of the time. I wouldn't find out who was hit next till they came into the box and I looked up and oh, okay. Now I gotta, oh, wait a minute, what was the scouting report with him? <laughs> I forgot. And because I was singularly focused, I was always just trying to get this pitch to work. Just make this one go where you want it to go. Then you go from there. Strike one. That is the change off the change that Doug Jones has become so famous for. 128 saves, the all-time Cleveland Indians save leader. He has 19 this year, and there was another one. He reminds me a lot you know, and that's what I loved about the ninth inning and closing games in the major leagues was you had these million-dollar infielders that you could hear, hit this, just go ahead. Go ahead, hit that one, I dare you. Here, here's one, an easy one, hit that one. And they pop it up or ground out or whatever, and you know it. It made the game a lot, a lot easier, a lot more fun. But nine years in the minor leagues was uh, was a challenge mentally. But at the same time, it wasn't hard because I was going to stay there as long as I could. I was going to make them tear the uniform off my back. You know what's nice about Jones? So many players here are superbly gifted, and they make the All Star team easily and early in their career. Here's a right hander. Last year was his 11th year in professional ball and his first full year in the majors. So he has really paid his dues. Being in the minor league system for any organization is a it's a privilege and it's a blast because you get to travel around and uh, go to different places, see different things, but you're playing baseball every day, and it's also a, a bit of a challenge because you know there's a ladder to climb. You've got to be consistent. You've got to 
do well enough to, to move on. I spent uh, one, one season with a trainer living in the living room. With a, he had an air mattress and my wife and I, we'd had our, our first child and he was crawling around on the floor and we moved in after another guy had been released. But they had a dog in their apartment and the place was full of fleas. So we literally had to bomb the apartment on two road trips so that we could get rid of the fleas in our apartment. Uh, that was a challenge. Pitcher, Doug Jones. That was, uh, that was pretty exciting to be a part of the All-Star Games. Five times was just incredible. And I got the win on the last one in Pittsburgh. That was, that was crazy. Game I wasn't even supposed to play in. Jim Fergosi was our manager in Philadelphia, and he told me, he says, you're not pitching today. So just relax and enjoy the day, have fun. And then we ended up tying the ball game up in the ninth inning. Fred McGriff hit a home run to tie it up off Lee Smith. And uh, he looked down at me and said, I need you to bullpen. <laughs> so I went down there and uh, Brett Saberhagen was the last pitcher down there. And uh, so we sat there and watched, watched things change. And then I got the call, had to come in the, the 10th inning and get us out. Struck out a couple guys, Cal Ripken and Chuck Knobloch. Got out of the inning and didn't give up a run. And then we ended up winning it when, when Moises drove in Tony Gwynn. That was pretty exciting. That was a lot of fun. There's Doug. Here he was Houston's MVP, saving 36 ball games in 42 tries, a Houston club record. Everywhere I went, I'd say, hey, this is what I learned. This helped me. You know, I can't throw 95. But even if you throw 95 or you throw 85, you can do this and it'll help you. And that tended to push other guys to try things and think through things. And that was kind of what I did as a pitcher. And I carried on to coaching afterwards in high school and college and the, the pro level. I, that's the same thing I did, Not, nothing I knew changed. And I didn't change trying to help others. But having, having a, a foundation in, in my faith, I knew that uh, none of this was that, that life importance, you know, that wasn't that big of a deal. Bouncing ball. Baseball actually was never a dream of mine. I never, I, I actually grew up with race cars in my mind. Uh, Dad drove for years, built them, worked on them, repaired them, did all the hands-on with a race car, uh, as far as I can remember. Here now with Mel Kenyon. Mel Kenyon was, again, a, a legend, even in the time uh, back in the 70s when I was here going to school. I think I'd been out to Mel's place once or twice when Dad needed a part that he might be able to pick up over there, and we went by his shop. Um, I may have met him one time, but again, it was, you know, that's Mel Kenyon. And so, I would, of course, I never said a word, but um, it was pretty exciting to meet him, but I'm sure he would never remember me. Dad was kind of funny about that kind of stuff. I mean, talking about my father, um, he knew so many people in racing it's fun to get out here and see. There's not a lot changed. It's grown, but uh, it's just not much different. The baseball park's about the same. Uh, there was one game here in uh, our senior year, and the and the uh, Phil Stump was our student body president, one of our seniors, and we had uh, just given up a bunch of runs. And we were in the last inning of the game, and we had somehow got a couple of guys on base, and, and we were down three runs. And uh, Keith was the coach, Keith Campbell. He turned around and told Phil, you're hitting. Phil couldn't hit. He, he was the greatest guy in the world, but he couldn't hit. He really wasn't a good athlete. I mean, he played sports, but he'd be the first to tell you he wasn't that good. We, we, three or four of us, had already gathered our gear 
And when he said he's hitting, and we went out here and we were at our cars parked back here behind the dugout. We were taking our spikes off and we were mad because we'd given up runs. And we were ready to go home. And he hit a three run home run. <laughs> and that was, a, that was a sectionals, as a matter of fact. That pushed us through the sectionals that year. And that was, that was exciting. <laughs> that was fun. Oh, you were done. Keith was so mad. <laughs> that was fun.